Good morning, everyone. I'm Will Dupree, broadcasting live here from Austin, Texas this morning. You're watching our third Japan 2020 live stream, and what a morning it's already proving to be. Joining me this morning is Aaron Cargill, seated here with me in the studio. Aaron, such a big morning. Lots of new announcements coming in very, very late today. Yeah, absolutely. So waking up to the news, literally got a, a KXA and push alert saying it is official. The uh, Tokyo 2020 Olympics uh, being postponed about a year. Of course, we have heard some some folks yesterday, uh, the president uh, of the IOC telling uh, USA Today uh, that this was what was going to be discussed over the next four weeks. And that news uh, being uh, not leaked out, so to speak, he was just telling, you know, a new news organization what was actually happening behind the scenes and once that uh, once that news got out uh, everyone followed uh, you know CNN ESPN all reporting that for sure uh, postponement about a year was for sure uh, going to happen I don't think any of us uh, were surprised especially uh, the team of seven reporters going for our company uh, who you know have been gearing up to go to Tokyo uh, fly out on July 17th now all of that getting pushed back one year yeah so again if you're just joining us I'm Will Dupree, that's Aaron Cargill joining me here in the studio, and we're talking about the postponement officially now of the Tokyo Games that are, were supposed to start in July. They're now going to happen as late as next summer. That's still being officially decided at this point. I also would like to make a note this morning. Uh, you may hear my voice be a little bit hoarse. Um, here in Texas, there are, have, there are such things as seasonal allergies, <laughs> and that is the effect of this that it has on me every single year here, unfortunately, and it's hitting at this moment. So just to say, and officially say, this is not COVID-19 related at all. It's all related to seasonal allergies, unfortunately. You know, Aaron, we have to talk for a living. <laughs> right, you've been talking a lot yeah, over the last few days. <laughs> yeah, so just to say that officially. Um, but I want to get to a statement that the International Olympic Committee and the Japanese leaders had put out earlier this morning talking about the postponement officially of the Olympic Games. Aaron, if you want to take and read over that one. Sure, so uh, the, again, joint statement from IOC in Japan. We're going to read this thing in its entirety here. We feel it's important in the present circumstances and based on the information provided uh, by the World Health Organization today, the IOC president and the Prime Minister of Japan have concluded that the games of the 32 Olympiad in Tokyo must be rescheduled to a date beyond 2020, but no later than summer 2021 to safeguard the health of the athletes, everybody involved in the Olympic Games and the international community. The leaders agreed that the Olympic Games in Tokyo could stand as a beacon of hope to the world during these troubled times and that the Olympic flame could become the light at the end of the tunnel in which the world finds itself at present. Therefore, it was agreed that the Olympic flame will stay in Japan. It was also agreed that the Games will keep the name Olympic and Paralympic Games Tokyo 2020. We found that interesting uh, yeah. there right at the end. Our branding here for the show stands, so I didn't know if we were going to have to <laughs> we change We don't have to that. change our graphics at all. Yeah, yeah. for sure. But, you know, uh, Will and I were talking just before this show. I mean, think about all the branding that's already in place uh, in Tokyo right now. You know, signs all over the place. Uh, also, the flame was already lit. And so I, I don't know if the call's been made to just keep that flame going. I would assume so. That's what it said. It seems mm -hmm. that they're hinting that it's going to stay in Japan. It's made its way there. It was lit first in Greece and then made its way to Japan with this very ceremonial uh, to do and it's going to stay there until the games are at least rescheduled and that date is officially announced. Well this morning Aaron and I are joined uh, by a third voice and he's been a very big expert on the Olympics here. I'm talking, of course, of Jack Doles. Aaron, if you don't mind introducing him as well. Sure, Jack Doles, one of the seven from our Next Star Nation team who uh, was always planning to go to Tokyo and has been to 11. Well, this would have been number 11 uh, going to, to Tokyo Olympics. Uh, so Jack's, uh, Jack's been around. He's been doing this uh, a long, long time. Uh, Jack, I don't think this was a surprise officially uh, coming out that the games were going to be postponed about about a year, but what are you thinking? Uh, what are you feeling right now? Well, after talking to a bunch of athletes, Aaron and Will, this, this is just the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do for the world, and it's definitely the right thing to do for the athletes. Um, you know, you may have heard Sam McCulloch, the U.S. gymnast, talking about the unfairness uh, and how how terrible the games would have been uh, had they gone on 
as planned because so many athletes just don't have the ability to train right now. You know, where do the gymnasts train? Where, where do you find all of that equipment that they need, uh, you know, to be up on each of those disciplines? Uh, can't even get into a regular gym right now. Uh, you basically have to know somebody or have something uh, in your backyard or your house. Um, and we talked to uh, a weightlifter yesterday <clears throat> after the news broke that this was going to most certainly happen, uh, Kate and I. And, you know, what she had put out on Twitter was that athletes like her that had already secured a spot in the Olympic team, they should be basically grandfathered in next year when these Olympic Games do finally happen. Uh, and I, I agree with her. I mean, she's put off school. She's put off work. She's put on ev off everything to train and get ready, you know, and compete uh, for these Olympic Games. And she earned her place. Uh, she should still have that place. But, you know, will they, will they do that? Or will they want athletes to earn those spots again a year from now so that they're peaking at just the right time? Those are questions the USOC will now have to answer with this news. Yeah, that's an interesting point that you bring up. I interviewed Kat Osterman, USA softball player, uh, gold medalist uh, in, in another Olympic Games, and this is not her first year. She came out of retirement to hopefully make uh, this Olympic Games her, her big comeback and, and hopefully uh, rewrite the end of her Olympic story. She had the exact same question because she, uh, you know, is one of the few who was already, already had her ticket to Tokyo. She already made that Olympic softball team. And so when I interviewed her, this was right before we learned that this postponement was actually going to happen, but most of our conversation was centered around what if this thing gets pushed back a year, and that's what she had asked. That she had been on a call with USA Softball the night before, and that was her question: Is does our team stay intact? Because she said typically when a team is named, that has a deadline on it, so it's only through you know that Olympic Games that they're competing for. And the answer they got was: We just don't know. This is uncharted waters. For for everybody uh, and and then Kat even I took a screenshot I'm gonna pull it up on my phone because she posted on Instagram uh, a picture of her team which really spoke to that conversation uh, that we were having let me pull it up here real quick I texted it to will this morning because uh, I knew I wanted to discuss it she put a picture of the team um, on, down on the, on the baseline all standing there together with their hands over their hearts and she put no matter the number of days ahead of us I choose us and I think that's a strong message too hoping that that team stays together and you know they were on a tour of the U.S. playing called the Stand Beside Her Tour and so they were really uh, uh, playing for the fans so everybody could see them before they went to Tokyo and it could help them prepare for the games and uh, it was really heartbreaking when that tour uh, had to be postponed and so she wasn't sure if the tour would be postponed till it's time to prepare for the next games or if it will pick back up when this world gets back to you know some some sense of normal so I know that's on a lot of athletes minds right now those who've already qualified and and then we've talked about this with our team of seven. What about those athletes who aren't at that, at that level right now to make a, an Olympic team, but you give it a year and now they're ready to go? And so, uh, you know, obviously a lot of the trials hadn't happened, so that does allow other, other athletes to come in if, if they're now at that level ready to, ready to uh, go for gold, so to speak. But uh, still a lot of questions. And I think that, that those are what, um, what the individual organizations, USA Swimming, USA Track and Field, are all going to have to have those discussions with the U USOPC in, in the coming days. This is just just the initial, hey, we're for sure going to postpone this thing. And now there's still a lot of work that has to be done to figure out what that looks like. Well, I know any of those organizations that haven't had their trials, like swimming and like uh, track and field, those aren't impacted as much as some of these sports, you know, the, the marathon. They've already held their trials. Those three athletes, male and female, um, <clears throat> all secured their spots. But are they going to make them do that again? Um, that would seem kind of cruel uh, to those athletes, you know, the weightlifters and some of these other sports, but the competition sports that haven't held their trials yet or their trials got delayed, I'm almost certain that what they'll do there is just hold those trials like a year from now, you know, to kind of coordinate with the same timing they had going up to whenever these games are played in Tokyo. 
Yeah. Uh, since we're talking so much about the athletes, we, our team was able to, uh, you know, get on FaceTime, get on Skype with some of these athletes in the last 24 hours and get their reaction yeah, to the potential for postponement that now uh, is actually happening. So, uh, Will, we strung together a lot of sound bites from uh, Olympic hopefuls and some who'd already qualified for the Olympics really across the country. And we're going to, we're going to play their reactions uh, right now. What's running through their mind? We do have to think about the general public. We have to think about one another in a time like this. I think it's so important <clears throat> to, um, you know, for this one time, athletes, we have to be selfish most of the time. That's how we're successful. We have to be selfish. But the, in this moment, we have to take a step back and realize that this is about our, our society. This is about our friends, our family, and about all the people that we don't know personally. We have to think about humans in general. And um, so that's kind of where my heart is. It pains me because I've given up my entire life um, to compete at the Olympics. And But if, if we have to postpone them for the health of the world, okay, let's do it. We are in control. And in the end of this, we're going to all make it through. Um, and this will play out however it, the intent is supposed to be. And, and I know that. And it's just a matter of, you know, especially for me personally, being a little bit older, like, am I going to have to really figure out how to do this for another year with my body? And if that's the case, then I'll do it. Um, and obviously, if that's the case, then that was the play, someone else's plan the whole time. And for us softball players specifically, we're not in it again until 2028. So it's like you're taking away, you're taking away the dream that you just reinstated. So, um, but yeah, I would still, I would still just refocus for July of 2021 or whatever the date they set. And I'm so far into it now. There's no, uh, there's no turning back. Athletes were all pretty stubborn, and I think that's what you're seeing a little bit right now. Is that the athlete inside every one of those board members is like, we're gonna make this happen because we put in the work. But in these unprecedented times, we need a little bit more direction because it's becoming increasingly difficult to find places to train. Um, and there's so many other things that we're worried about as well. Uh, so just a little bit of direction. If it's going to be postponed, we can all adjust our training schedules to then um, peak at that time, whenever that's going to be. Um, I don't want to see it postponed, but I also don't want to see uh, people getting sick. I don't want to see the, the curve to continue to spike. Um, so it's, it's, there's so many factors, and it would help just to have a little bit of guidance and a little bit of uh, information from the governing bodies. Um, you know, I've already, you know, had the open water trials, but um, a lot of sports haven't had their trials yet. And so, um, or have had them, you know, they were already supposed to have them and, and currently they're being postponed, but at a um, unknown date. And so to not know, you know, how hard you should be training when you're going to have to taper or peak, um, you know, that's, that's really difficult too. And um, so, you know, yeah, like I said, ideally, um, if it, if they were postponed until next summer, everyone would be able to um, kind of be on that level playing field again and, and be able to train um, like they're used to. As a distance runner, I'm lucky because um, I can do a huge majority of my training on just a remote road somewhere or a treadmill, but um, most people need facilities, um, certainly other sports do. So I think that was the concern that those athletes would feel pressure to kind of skirt their way around quarantines and stuff, which isn't really what we need. They're not really telling us um, much. And I know it's not just about the athletes, about the spectators for Tokyo and such. And I know, you know, money is a big question in this whole thing as well, too. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, they're going to make the right decision on athletes' health, health and spectators' health. But I'd like to think that four months from now, this will hopefully be all in the past and we'll just be looking at it as like a little, you know, bump in the road and just kind of look, look past it, hopefully. But if they're postponed, that'd be great. <laughs> I think that's kind of what all the athletes are envisioning. Obviously, we don't want it to be canceled. That would be that'd be stupid. Um, but yeah, uh, being being po postponed, I think would kind of give us a little bit of it. It take the edge off a little bit for most of the athletes. So um, that's kind of what I'm hoping happens. And that last uh, Olympic hopeful, Lily King, is a swimmer. We didn't have enough time to, to get her name uh, on the screen there with her. Jack, I want to talk about Donovan Brazier because I was able to see your full exchange with him back and forth. You've got most athletes at this point uh, right before uh, the IOC decided to postpone this thing, saying that is the right move at this point. But even when you talked to him, he was still set for a July 24th start. He's like, this. I think this is just a blip on the radar. And 
and uh, I can see us in Tokyo in you know four months. That that's pretty uh, pretty crazy at that point. Is that just that athlete Olympic spirit of like we're gonna get through this and this thing's gonna happen and you know we're not gonna give up? Is that the attitude we're seeing there from him? I think what you saw from Donovan is he's one of those athletes that was peaking at just the right time. You know, if the Olympics were two years ago, um, he was dealing with an Achilles issue. He wasn't healthy. His times weren't good. Uh, and we weren't sure which direction his career was heading as young as he is. But in the last year, he's won the world championship. He's setting U.S. records. Uh, he is doing what no other U.S. athlete has ever done in the 800 meters. And he was an absolute gold medal favorite should the games have happened this year in 2020. He was peaking at just the right time. So I think there's a part of him that was like, no, this can't happen. It's going to, we're going to, they're going to come off. We'll, you know, we'll just get through this. Uh, now he's got to sit back and, and look at what's ahead here, knowing that there will be no competitions anywhere in the world for the next three to six months. Uh, so now he's going to just have to find a place to train. Uh, you know, he, he runs for Nike, uh, so he lives and trains in Oregon, but Nike has closed their facility. So he's one of those many athletes that's been displaced, and now he's got to come up with a plan. How do I stay in shape? How do I peak at just the right time? Uh, you know, he'll talk to his coaches, but a lot of this, he's going to be a grind that he's got to do on his own, uh, maybe with a friend or two or, you know, a coach that he's worked with. I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up back here in Michigan, at least for a good part of the summer, uh, to train with a coach that he does trust here uh, in Grand Rapids. Um, so, yeah, he was a guy that looked like an absolute gold medal favorite, uh, gold medal possibility. And now he's got to go, Ugh. you know, now we got to do this all over again and be ready for 2021. Yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking too, Jack, about how I guess it was, I've lost track of time, track of time. in the middle of all of this, but it was about two weeks ago. We were in Colorado. We were supposed to be at the Olympic Training Center. We went to the Olympic Training Center to interview athletes. Uh, the night before, they said, sorry, you're not going to be able to access athletes. Uh, they're, they're off limits right now. And, and, and now that entire training center is closed. I just think back, you know, we have been so focused on uh, how is this impacting athletes? Uh, you know, the reaction from them, it's, this timeline has been wild. Uh, the fact that the IOC said, uh, you know, weeks ago, we're not ready to make a call. We think it's too early to make a call. We're probably not going to say anything until end of May, uh, maybe June. And then that just got, you know, blown out of the water completely. What were you thinking when you had USA Swim come out and, and say, USOPC, you need to push the IOC to delay this thing? And then we saw Canada pull out and Australia. I mean, the, the end was, was imminent at, at that point. Yeah, the dominoes started to fall. Uh, and once the USOC did not push the issue, uh, you know, I, I believe the governing bodies felt we've got to step up now for our athletes, uh, looking at what was best for them. Uh, again, when you hear Sam McCulloch, who's the top U.S. gymnast, say, this isn't fair. They can't hold these games. Uh, I, I think we need to sit back and listen to one of these athletes who's competing to be a part of it. And again, Sam was one of those guys. This will be his third Olympics. He's still yearning to win his first medal uh, and looks like this is, the, you know, this is the time for him. So, of course, he doesn't want this, like Donovan, doesn't want this pushed back. But for the fairness of everybody, um, yes, they have to do that. But more importantly, for what's going on in this world, um, this just isn't the right time for these Olympics to happen. Uh, and I don't think uh, Japan wants to see uh, empty stadiums at all their Olympic events. Uh, they've got a lot of money invested into this. Uh, you know, there's a lot of national pride. And if, uh, if all you're seeing are empty um, stadiums, uh, I, I think it would be one of those where they would be scoffed at for holding these games. Uh, and it just would not be a good look. So, they needed to do this. And the other thing uh, that's really interesting, Aaron, and I when I, I know I mentioned Kate and I a little bit earlier. Uh, Kate, uh, when we did a story on her, she's very open about uh, everything, posts everything on social media. And one of the things she posted um, a little while before we did the story on her was that she was diagnosed as bipolar. So when I talked to her yesterday, 
I, I asked her, how are you doing through all this? And how is this impacting you? And she said, "If I'd be lying to you if I told you I was all right. This is just um, very difficult to deal with. And uh, so mental health is such a huge issue, uh, especially now with all the concerns and worries that come along with coronavirus. I'm sure you've seen it with people you work with, Aaron, at KXAN. There are a lot of people walking around our building. Just if you walk too close to them, they'll take a step back. It, a lot of people are very nervous about what's happening right now. Uh, and so you've got to give them their space. Uh, and you've got to give these athletes a chance to be you know, mentally at the top of their game. Um, physically, but mentally is so important. And, uh, you know, Kate is struggling like so many other people are with what's happening uh, that, you know, it's probably a good thing that goes back a year. But again, I think the IOC and the USOC, especially for the U.S. athletes that have already made the team, need to make a decision very quickly to let these athletes know that have already earned their place if they're going to be on that team a year from now because that'll take a, a load off their minds, but you know they'll continue to train because that's what they do. Yeah, Jack, that's a great point. I think the mental health part of this is huge, uh, and, and uh, especially for athletes, but for every human being in, in the world right now, uh, really staying in tune and acknowledging you know, how they're feeling, what they're going through. Uh, we've never, no one has ever been through anything like this uh, before. So, um, you know, I would encourage anyone, just a little PSA at this point, to, you know, reach out and talk to others and, and you know, do a, do a telemedicine uh, visit if you can, or uh, you know, reach out and see Seek help uh, because you uh, your feelings are, are validated, and, and you should certainly be acknowledging all of that uh, right now. Tyrone Smith, one of the long jumpers we heard from earlier, I talked to him uh, about three days ago before the postponement was official, and he said that very thing. We we are just being strung along here, trying to scramble, find places to train, and we need some direction. That was his exact quote. We need some direction right now uh, from the IOC, our lives are not in limbo uh, as we're trying to compete for the biggest competition in, in our life. Uh, so, also, Will, we've got um, a, a fascinating interview. Uh, you talked to a professor uh, about all of this who was really pushing for postponement. Yes, uh, we spoke to him yesterday when my voice was sounding a little bit better uh, than it is this morning. But his name is uh, Jules Boykoff, and he is a political science professor at Pacific University in Portland, Oregon. He's also a former professional soccer player and had trouble with the Olympic team in the past when he was in those playing days. And he's also written at least four books about the intersection of politics and Olympics and its history. And so he had written this article talking about why haven't the games been canceled yet. And so that's how we started our conversation. Once again, this was before this announcement today from the IOC and Japan that the games are indeed delayed, postponed at this point. So just keep that in mind as you're listening to our conversation because that's how we framed it, was that he was questioning why this hadn't been done just yet. So let's take a listen. You recently co-wrote an article titled, Why Haven't the Olympics Been Canceled Yet? For people who haven't read that article, share your thoughts about why this event has not been called off right now. Well, first, we argued that to hold the Olympics during a global pandemic like the one we're seeing right now with coronavirus is the height of irresponsibility. It basically would create a huge petri dish, a big human experiment that would be dangerous for global health. And then we tried to figure out, well, why isn't the International Olympic Committee, the body that oversees the Olympic Games, why aren't they acting with more vigor and force? And we broke down some of the big components. There's money, to, to be sure. There's a lot of money floating through the system. The Olympics are the way that the International Olympic Committee makes its money and gets its profits. Same for the broadcasters, such as NBC here in the United States. Both the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, and NBC are insured, to be sure, so they won't lose loads of money per se, but they also won't get the big profits that they be become accustomed to. You know, we also talked about the factor that 
Shinzo Abe, the prime minister of Japan, has put a lot of political capital into making sure these games happen. He was involved all the way back in 2013 when Tokyo was first handed the games by the International Olympic Committee. And he's been along for the ride the whole time. You might call the Olympics his pet project. So there's a lot of internal politics as well. Then there's also the International Olympic Committee which has been dogged in insisting that the games must go on, both now in the face of coronavirus, but also historically when there's been terrorism, for example, at the 1972 Olympics in Munich. The head of the Olympics at that time, Avery Brundage, said the games must go on. So there's a number of factors that are contributing to the somewhat quizzical notion of continuing with the Olympics in the face of coronavirus here just in July when they're slated to begin. The International Olympic Committee is now saying that it will make a more clear decision on the future of these games for Tokyo in about four weeks. I'd imagine you disagree with that, but let me know your thoughts about that particular announcement from the International Olympic Committee. Well, first of all, it's a major change in their tune. They have been saying that the games will go on no matter what. And so them opening up the door to potential postponement or maybe even cancellation, although they said very directly they do not want to cancel, that's a big step and it's a very big shift in direction. Um, in terms of why they did it, I think it's pretty important to point out that the only reason that the International Olympic Committee made this shift in their approach yesterday is because of a tremendous upsurge in athlete power. Athletes from around the globe have been speaking out and saying, hey, we should be postponing these Olympics. Here in the United States, we've seen USA Swimming as well as USA Track and Field speak out as bodies saying, we think the games should be postponed. Individual athletes in the United States, such as legends, Olympic legends like Dick Fosbury, who invented the Fosbury flop for the high jump, he's spoken out and said it should be postponed. I come to you from Oregon, where track is king. Ashton Eaton is a legend here, and he's spoken out saying that the Olympics should be postponed. So in the face of that athlete power, the Olympics changed their tune. We also heard from Canada and Australia now saying that they will not send athletes if the summer games go on as scheduled. What do you think about that? Does that carry a lot of weight, having at least those two countries speak out in this way? Will, that is humongous. When Canada had the courage to say essentially that they were going to do a de facto boycott. They said they would not send their athletes to Tokyo in 2020. Of course, they left the door open should the Olympics be postponed and the global health pandemic gets cleared up. They'd be open to sending their athletes down the road. But it's basically a de facto boycott. Australia, as you mentioned, followed suit only a few moments after Canada made that major announcement. And there probably will be more countries that will do the very same thing. Jules Boykoff, thanks so much for joining us all the way from Portland, Oregon. We do appreciate your perspective on this, and maybe we'll reach out to you in the future. Sounds good. Thanks. So there we heard from uh, Jules Boykoff, again, a political science professor from Pacific University in Portland, Oregon. Of course, that conversation, conversation. yesterday before this announcement today that was pretty uh, big and historic in its nature because for the first time in Olympic history, the Games will be postponed, Aaron. Yeah, uh, definitely uh, first time ever, ever. There's been a cancellation which we uh, talked about, Jack, last time. Our team was, was all together. But, um, you know, what do you make of this? Uh, we, are, we are living uh, through history right now. Yeah, it's like we're in this history book that our kids will be reading years from now, our grandkids. It's, um, it's pretty crazy, Aaron. Yeah, we've had games canceled because of wartime, but now postponed because of a, a global illness. Um, just shows you how serious this is right now. I mean, again, if you look at those pictures coming out of Italy, uh, it should be a wake-up call for all of us. We don't want to get to that point. Um, so the games, as much as we look forward to them, uh, they're just not that important at this point um, to what's happening in this world. I think a lot of resources and efforts should be put toward trying to find a, uh, a way to stop it, a way to cure it, and uh, those are going to be the people that should get the focus, all these scientists um, that will really help us get through this. 
Yeah, and uh, our, our team of seven reporters who are we're going to be covering uh, this in July, uh, we ourselves are having a conference call this afternoon to come together as a team and, and talk about, uh, you know, what we need to talk about moving forward and what that looks like over the next year as uh, hopefully we re-prepare for uh, Tokyo 2021. Also, one thing I want to mention, I find it interesting that um, that the uh, IOC and, and, and Japan, they're going to keep Keep the 2020 logo going that branding is going to continue although i uh did change my hashtag yesterday on twitter to tokyo 2021 and some people uh have been doing that uh, as well but you think about so many things that have to be in tokyo right now with uh with 2020 on them and they certainly don't want to spend even more money to have to remake any of that that's that's an additional expense uh, uh, on top of the money that i'm sure they're already losing at this point yeah, absolutely. Um, and they're the 2020 games. Uh, they'll always be the 2020 games, but uh, I'm sure you'll see some new logos come out with a, you know, a, a mark through the zero and a one behind it. Um, th there'll be clever ways that things are done and collector's items from this. But uh, again, uh, going forward, this should all be about health and safety. And uh, when the games are finally taking place, it'll be a world celebration that I think will be pretty fantastic. Uh, and hopefully we, we see that day and we get to see it live, Aaron. I agree. It's going to be uh, quite the Olympics when they when they do happen. Jack Doles from Grand Rapids, Michigan, our station there, Wood TV. Thank you so much for your input input both this week and last week. You you are the uh, the all knowing uh, guy when it comes to the Olympics. So we're we're lucky to be able to to have you to go to uh, for information. Thank you so much, Jack, for joining us. You bet. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody, that was uh, Jack Doles joining us from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Jack, we really do appreciate it, and uh, what great perspective to have, for sure. Um, he's been going to the Olympics for such a long time and covering that and knows these games in and out. Uh, so, of course, we're glad to have his perspective to share this morning, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. And we have a good transition into a final clip we want to leave you with. Like Jack said, it is all about the health and safety of uh, everyone, uh, not just athletes, but the entire world right now. And uh, we did see this uh, video, a lot of, uh, uh, you know, funny, funny things on Twitter right now as people try to find the lighthearted moments. And this is Alec Yoder. Who's uh, a gymnast. Yeah, USA Gymnastics <laughs> changing that whiteboard. Yeah, take a look there. He's erasing the zero. <laughs> in Tokyo 2020 and then adding the one. Yeah, the dream doesn't change. It's no, just he's still a different pursuing it. it's just a different timeline at this at this point. I've even gotten texts from, you know, friends and family this morning and uh, messages on social media. What are you going to do? How are you feeling? And uh, you know, it's it's not really about us. We're here to tell the the story of the athletes and and how this is impacting them. Uh, you know, I, it's a, it's an honor to be able to, to go over to Tokyo for our company and cover the Olympics. So, you know, if that gets postponed a year, so be it. Hopefully I'm, uh, I'm not told this afternoon I'm not going to Tokyo 2021, but, uh, I hope you, yeah. you get to go. I'm sure yeah. you will get to go. Yeah. yeah. I put, uh, I think on Twitter yesterday, I'll be just one year older, one year smarter, hopefully, or, or we could all be getting dumber, you know, right. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, uh, it, it'll be good. And we'll have even longer to get to know the athletes. And That's we've right. already, uh, you you know, made connections with them, built relationships, and so that will just continue. So hopefully we will still be everyone's go-to uh, for covering all things Olympics, and we are we are so lucky to be that for you. Yeah, and you said, Aaron, that the Next Star team is calling, having a call this afternoon mm -hmm. to kind of talk about where we go from here. Yeah, for sure, because everything has been, you know, full speed ahead, all gun ho for all the logistics and planning that needs to happen uh, to cover these games. I mean, you guys, it is quite a, quite a feat. We have big, you know, Google documents, spreadsheets, uh, the number of live shots that we do uh, for, for our stations across the country is, uh, it's pretty insane when you, when you do it and then you look back and see the number of, of live shots and stories that you turned, but you're pretty much running on adrenaline the entire time you're there. Uh, and so we, we were, uh, you know, getting to the tail end, basically, we had a, that meetup trip in Colorado where the seven of us came together in a conference room uh, for several days and then went to the Olympic Training Center. And then I believe the next time we were all supposed to meet up was going to be in LA to take that flight uh, to Tokyo. Of course, two members of our team, Jack Doles, who is just
just with us and Andrew Martin were supposed to go to the media summit in Los Angeles that uh, was the following week I believe it was supposed to be last week that was really the first uh, the first uh, chip to fall so to speak and uh, that was the first cancellation and at that point we knew uh, things were getting real this was getting serious and uh, and things could be uh, uh, very much impacted and uh, and so obviously uh, here we are now talking about officially a postponement of uh, the Olympics happening in about a year they haven't set a date yet they're right. not saying for sure July 24th of 2021 obviously still a lot of logistics to to work out but we have to assume that it's going to be about you know the same time frame next year whatever works back best for uh, for Japan and and NBC and everybody who um, who's putting these games on we haven't even talked about the fact that this is now going to bump up pretty close to the next winter Olympics right. too. I think there was a tweet about that this morning. It's saying, you know, just a few months after that, China is hosting the Winter Olympics mm -hmm. in 2022. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I imagine that they're going to be planning for both all yeah. at the same time. A big undertaking yeah. for sure. I will say that since we've been talking about uh, almost 40 minutes now, there has been a new statement that's come out from U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee. Yesterday, we will note that they said uh, that they support postponement of the Games. They had heard from athletes, had conducted a survey, and had put out this joint statement after listening to its athletes saying, hey, we support postponement too. And then now today, uh, that action has been taken by the IOC. So let's take a look. This is part of the statement from U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee. Um, Aaron, if you don't mind reading that, since sure. your voice sounds much better Absolutely. than mine this morning. Absolutely. So the excellence within Team USA is our resilience and how we overcome adversity. I have no doubt we will get through this together as a team and all be better because of it. That coming from the uh, CEO. Uh, so yeah. Um, one more year uh, of preparation for, for all of us, for those covering the games, uh, for the athletes as well. And I think uh, only time will tell what that means and any new faces uh, that, that come along for trials that haven't happened yet. Yeah. And we'll be updating folks on what happens with uh, those athletes who have already qualified. I think we'll see those decisions coming down in the next few days. Hopefully uh, teams like USA Softball will be getting uh, some direction. But as of right now, everyone uh, really, you know, confined their homes at this point when I interviewed Kat Osterman yesterday uh, she was at home and uh, she said something pretty interesting she said I wake up you know now in my house I can't leave all I can do is work out I'm, I'm trying to find my purpose other than just waking up and working out every day of course at that point she was still thinking uh, she needed to keep her training uh, at that Olympic level uh, but now uh, you know she can back down uh, just a little bit but as she told me and if you missed her interview clip earlier she said you know what if these Olympics are happening a year from if from now I'm I'm still I'm still in it you know I've uh, I'm all in at this point and it is full speed ahead for 2021 so uh, that is uh, that is our new focus as well we are so glad that you have joined us this morning and continued to to follow this journey to Tokyo which is now just taking a, a little bit more time yeah and it changes our trajectory too mm -hmm. because we had planned to do these streams every week uh, preparing for the games, letting people get to know the athletes, share those stories, and talk about some of the things that are happening in the world. This obviously pumps the brakes on our decisions, so mm -hmm. we are trying to figure out what we might do as well, uh, preparing yeah. for these games to happen now next year. Yeah, and that'll be something that we discuss later today, just full transparency with you guys. You know, in that conference call that we have with our team, I think we'll discuss this digital show and what we want to do uh, moving forward. So, yeah, thank you all so much yes, for joining thank us. You. Thank you, Will, and uh, stay tuned to, uh, to our, uh, our websites, your station websites there, and uh, continue staying safe and, and healthy. Yeah, that's the only thing we can ever say is that please pay attention to your local news station or whatever news source you get information from because now is the most important time to pay attention to those warnings. And we've seen some... Um, states and even cities take actions now to say people need to stay at home and only limiting businesses that are determined as essential to stay open at this point and of course there may be more action to follow so please follow along with your news outlet of choice because we are working and going through all the information that is ever changing literally from moment to moment um, and trying to put that out so that you all can stay informed and safe and healthy yeah well, um, Aaron, thank you so much for being here and uh, for handling a lot of the talking this morning yeah, as I deal with my seasonal allergies. I appreciate that. Take care of yourself, yes, Will. Drink I that hot try. tea. I'm uh, <laughs> going to let you go. uh, stop yeah. talking at this yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> I've got it right here. So, um, Aaron, thanks again once. 
uh, for talking to, talking to everything, um, talking through everything and doing all of your reporting so far. I know that this puts a hamper on things about what you all had expected to do, but I know that that's going to continue in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're not, we're not going to stop either. All right. Thank you all as well for watching and for sticking with us. And we hope to have some more information to share with you all very soon about the Olympics, about when the date will officially be announced for Tokyo 2021. All right, we're going to end our stream now, but thank you all for watching. We'll see you back here another time, and enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe, stay healthy.